Phase three and the Sunken Temple raid change up what we're actually gonna be using for hunter pets. And with the introduction of the Focus Fire rune, every single spec will be running a pet. This also includes melee hunters because they will be playing beast mastery over survival. And Blizzard also introduced this awesome core hound pet that looks amazing, but is it actually gonna be your best pet for the raid? Well, first of all, you do need to know that there's gonna be three best pets for basically three different situations in in season of discovery phase three so i'll break all of these down for you and where you can train them tame them as well as where you can get the abilities you want to focus on first up let's answer the question of is the core hound pet any good well it basically acts like a wind serpent where it has a major ability the fire breath ability that costs 50 focus and this will do semi-comparable damage to the wind serpent but it actually has a lower ap scaling so it actually means that the core hound pet is weaker than a wind serpent. And foregoing BM hunters for a second, moving straight to marksman hunters. If you are playing marksman ranged hunter, you want to have a fast attack speed pet. That's mostly because of the focus fire rune, which all of your pet's abilities, it actually says all of your pet's attacks will cause a frenzy. St and starting off with ranged hunter, the best pet is going to be a cat. There is literally no question about this. It is always going to be a cat. And there's a tiny variance with your cat's attack speed. But the real reason why you want to use a cat now is because of the focus fire rune. Now this rune does read that every time your pet attacks, it increases its attack speed by 3%, stacking five times. It's not actually a normal attack. It only counts when your pet uses a special ability, which is why we're using a cat because they have claw, which has no cooldown whatsoever, and it only costs 25 focus. This also means that your cat can stack this up very quickly and you can use the ability to consume all of those stacks to have a 15% attack speed bonus on yourself while your cat is also able to stack these up all the way again very quickly so that you never actually drop the buff. So if you're using this rune and you're playing ranged hunter, you're going to want to make sure that your cat is only using claw. Literally, you'll see these stacks just going up here. Your cat is only using claw, not bite. And then once you get to five stacks, you can consume these to give yourself the focus fire buff and your pet will get these stacks up again very quickly. Now, there's a little bit of a debate between a cat that has a 2.0 and a 1.0 attack speed, which the only one in the game is going to be Broken Tooth. I'll show you where to get it in a second. But the only reason you would ever want a faster attack speed cat is you will get a couple DPS. Literally, it's so tiny, but you will get a couple DPS only if your tank is using Gift of Arthas, the consumable. But if your tank isn't using Gift of Arthas, there's no reason to hard farm Broken Tooth. It is on a six to eight hour respawn timer, but if you camp this location right here, then it has three spawn locations. I'm marking them right here on the map, and it is every six to eight hours. I would just show up here after a server reset on Tuesday or Wednesday, whenever it happens for your region, and then six to eight hours later, you'll definitely get one to spawn, but there's definitely going to be some contestion. Now, as a melee hunter, there's two choices. You can get a slow attack speed cat or a wind serpent that has lightning breath rank five. And there's very, very few of these in the game, but the easiest one to get is gonna be the wind serpent from the raid, the spawn of Hakar. You actually unlock these as you click the idols to weaken the very first boss in the raid. They just spawn all the way behind you. So I would suggest everybody go into the raid and tame this wind serpent with your group. Just have the other hunter freezing trap it, or you can even just trap it yourself. And you can actually solo this, but it's kind of inconvenient. So just do it in the raid. It's not really a big deal. And this new rank of Lightning Breath actually gets stronger with raid buffs, meaning it will be your best pet as you have raid buffs. And the raid buffs I'm talking about in particular are gonna be Storm Strike from a Shaman or Dream State from a Druid. These will give 20% extra nature damage to everyone in the raid. And that's nature damage being boosted to your Wind Serpent. So if you are playing Horde, you can just instantly get a Wind Serpent right now. It will be incredibly powerful. And if you're playing a Alliance, you might need to wait until you're in a Boomkin raid. But there's also another buff that makes these Wind Serpents even stronger, making them the best pet this phase. And that is going to be when someone in your raid has the offhand 
epic fist weapon, the Serpent's Striker. This will increase the nature damage by another 8%, and it also reduces the target's nature resistance by 60. So when you have both of these buffs, which you'll definitely start having a little bit later in this phase, then the Wind Serpent just will be your best pet. And just grabbing the one from the raid makes it a lot easier. There's technically a rare spawn you can get, but it's just terrible to farm. Just grab the one in the raid. It's super simple. But until you have those debuffs available to you, the most consistent and strongest pet is as always gonna be a cat. We want a 2.0 attack speed cat, which you could have had one already, which you needed to level up. But if you want to tame one directly at level 50, then there's one available for you right here on Jaguaro Island. This is east of Booty Bay in STV. It's the same island you need to go to for your profession quest. And there are these Jaguaro stalkers here. They are level 50 already and they have 2.0 attack speed but they do initially come with prowl and cower trained on them so what you're going to want to do once you get one is just head back to a major city to a pet trainer and just pay a few silver to have these skills washed away now what you're going to want to do here is train them rank 7 bite and rank 7 claw claw again if you're using focus fire just don't even use bite but to get both of these abilities first either head to feralis or head to the hinterlands in the hinterlands along the coast there are the saltwater snap jaws that can teach you bite or if you go to Jintha Allure and head all the way up to the top where you complete the mallet quest for ZF there are going to be these elite wolves here and they are already level 50 but they hit extremely hard and they do thrash so make sure they don't hit you if you're going to want to tame one of these then for claw rank 7 head over to Felwood and you can tame one of the anger claw maulers there are two types of bears in the zone make sure you are taming one of the maulers and you can have the add-on tamed to make sure you know what each one of these mobs have before you even try to tame it or you can also tame the iron beak hunters these are going to be the owls around the zone and again they are level 50 and they come with the max rank of claw and from there you can teach your pet some nature resistance it's definitely helpful especially if you're using it in maradon to solo princess farms but it's not necessary actually in the raid what i would actually prefer generally for overall is getting some armor and stamina the stamina is not huge but getting extra armor on your pet makes them a ton tankier so i would highly Highly suggest using some talent points on extra armor and then whatever you want to nature resistance obviously will help out in the raid but again your pet doesn't take too much damage in the raid and that should cover everything you need to know about pets in season of discovery phase three for hunters if you want to stay up to date with everything hunter for this phase i'm working on guides for both of the specs melee and range and those should be out within the next day so to become the biggest hunter chad you can of course subscribe to the channel and i'll see you guys all on the next one